Gee, Charlie, where are we going now on our journey? <laughs> <laughs> We're going out to Isla. Uh, Isla? And... That's the name of my computer. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine's Petey. <laughs> well, what you what you find with Isla's is they're very unique flavors, and I, I'm, I'm I'm going to tell you something, and I want to see or ask you something. I want you to tell me what you think the answer is. Okay. On Isla, I didn't realize we were going to be pop quizzing here. On Isla, <laughs> you have Ardbeg, Lagavulin, Lafroig, uh, Port Allen, Bowmore, Unahaven, Kilcherman, Kalila, Rafflati. Now, my question to you is this. Which of those is the smokiest, peatiest scotch on an everyday basis? Which has the most smoke in peat? I say Ardbeg. Ardbeg or Lagavulin? I think Ardbeg. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Lagavulin is why I like it so much. Why consistently I like the Ardbeg so much. But I feel like you're going to tell us what's wrong. Actually, you got number one and number two. Ardbeg is number one. But out of the people I've quizzed on this, virtually no one has ever said our big is. Really? I mean, that seems fairly... Like and I'll tell you why. Well, it's... I'll tell you why. And no one would probably guess this one is number two. And the reason I say that is, on Isla, the smoky peaty scotches that are made to be smoky peaty, there are several distilleries that literally try to refine that out on Isla. So... Uh, in particular, Bunahaven and Kolila take out a good percentage most of the time of the peat mm -hmm. and smoke. But, uh, and so does Bowmore in some cases. But most people don't guess them as number one or number two. And because they're basically, because they're so well integrated, yeah. that people don't realize that they're drinking the PD of Scotch. But in terms of an everyday art back, it's 55 parts per million peak. The next closest one is this one, which is 30 parts per million. And then they drop off drastically. Right. Most people, for smoky, peaty, ugly, they guess Lafroig, which I agree with. Yeah. It's, it's not very well integrated. I, yeah, it's, 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 it's medicinal. It's medicinal. It's medicinal. It's, it's not, it's, it's, okay, I'm, I'm going to do something that I shouldn't do here. But I find that Lafroig is very categorized. As in, when you taste it, it's, there's this taste, there's this taste, and this taste. And they're all shoved at you. Which some people might enjoy a lot. I prefer this movement, this slow flowing movement through the taste. That's very good. Actually, that is what they do. And they do have a following, there's no question. Yeah. There are kids in Scotland that grew up on Lafroig and, and won't drink anything else. Uh, this is a relatively new scotch from Lagavulin, and you'll meet some of the nicest Peter there, the people there that you have ever met in your life. Uh, Ian, who runs the distilleries, is about five foot five. I could tell you story after story with him, but you know my wife's an HR vice president of a bank, <laughs> so you have to be very careful what you say around her, right? And uh, we were tasting, a, we were barrel tasting, and he poured us each a sample out of this barrel, and I noticed it, and then I smelled it really well, and then I smelled it again, and then I tasted it, I said, my God, you know, or Ian, is that even 40%? And he said, I, he said, Exactly 40. We call it our ladies round. <laughs> to it, my wife bristled. Of course she did. Of course and, she did. Uh, I love that one. But at, at that particular point, um, it, it was a very soft, very... Um, well, let's just put it this way. You get scotch and <coughs> they, they monitor their barrels. Right. Because once they go below 40, they have to be blended. They have to be vapid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they have to pick a bigger scotch to go with it. So they don't like doing that, mm -hmm. obviously. Because if you say this is a blended scotch or a batted scotch from a lot of one, people aren't going to like it as much as a single right. mold. Okay? So they try not to do that. But this one was right on the cusp and they were just bottling it. And, um, I, I love Isla's because it's the perfect 
way to show people that color really doesn't mean anything. Because yeah. they're the biggest look. flavors you get, and they tend to be very, very white. Yes. Let's, let's <laughs> Whereas take a you, close look at this. Yeah. So we've been looking at some other scotches that are really deep, deep color. Mm -hmm. And and they've been they've been it, well, I mean, know, just great. this last yeah. one that we tasted, which crazy was deep color, which is delicious, delicious, but very mild in flavor. I mean, strong, sweet strong, flavors, but not but not mm -hmm. yeah. not this heavy smoke. This. This is nice and light. It looks it looks like it could be safe for an Isla. For an Isla. Smell it. Yeah, what you uh, Oh yeah. It's not no, be that's safe. big. <laughs> that is I, smoke and peat. Those and, are my two favorites. And a little and a little bit of sugar. <laughs> on an everyday basis, those are my two favorite scotches on Isla are Art Big and Light Woman. And it's amazing, you know, they're within a half mile of each other. And their flavor or their tasting profile is totally different. Completely different. But and oh, then a half mile down from geez. them, from Lagavulin, is Lafroy, which is oh. totally different. But this, to me, is a great whiskey. Mm. Okay. That is, I want to taste this now. Smoke and spice and peat and love. A little bit of, I just tasted it, and a little bit of uh, citrus and nut and caramel. That is a great, great item. It's a campfire waiting to happen. It's, oh it's, a, it's my a camp, God. It's, it's cooking over a campfire. It's I'm cooking a, pancakes over a campfire. Okay, this is what I'm getting because of that touch of spice. I'm getting a certain time of the year in New Mexico when they roast the chilies on open campfires mm -hmm. out in the fields. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. the smoke it is. Is that a little bit spicy smoke? Yeah, mm -hmm. in Hawaii they make, uh, that's where I'm from, they make hulu hulu chicken is what it's called, and it just means churn churn chicken, and they roast it on a spit, and they sell them for, um, they do big fundraisers with them, and so you just have this parking lot filled with smoking, cooking chickens, and that's, yeah, it, it tastes like that, like this sweet smoke, it's wonderful. Well, I want to thank you, ladies, for coming to. Thank you, Charlie, mm -hmm. for doing this with us. To my thank man you. cave, and I hope to see you again soon. Uh, Doubtful. <laughs> and there's the season. Well, now we know where you live, so you know we're just going to be knocking on your door. <laughs>